a gorgeous looking dish and it's totally delicious on today's menu. Today I'm going to be making chicken fried steak. Chicken fried steak is popular in Texas. I mean really, really popular. A lot of restaurants sell it. Uh, a lot of people love this dish and a lot of people call it their favorite food. All right, so in Texas, chicken fried steak is kind of king when it comes to popular dishes. Something I want to get into before we start about this recipe is to respond to some of my viewers who watched my original chicken fried steak recipe. Uh, to the folks in Europe that have sent me lots of uh, questions about why do you call it chicken fried? All right, so here's the thing. In the southern United States, we refer to a certain battering technique as chicken fried. It's called that because we fry our chicken using this battering technique. It gives a really crispy, crunchy batter to whatever you're frying up and it's exactly perfect for a chicken fried steak. So we're using this battering technique and that's the reason we call it that, uh, is it's a dry batter and it produces hard crunchy effect. And so we call it chicken fried steak. So kind of weird, I know, but um, hey, it's Southern United States, so <laughs> what can you expect? All right, chicken fried steak is delicious. Uh, another question that's come up many times in the past was, why didn't you just use drippings from the pan to make the gravy? Well, the technique I'm showing is actually deep fried. If you're going to make gravy from drippings in a pan, you really need to use um, a very shallow fry. In other words, very little oil. And that's not the technique we're using today. That's sort of an older technique and it produces a gravy that I refer to, I like to call country gravy. Country, country gravy is similar to cream gravy, but not quite the same. Cream gravy is very smooth and, and clear and white, and sometimes you'll see specks of pepper in it, and that's the way we like to do it in Texas. So I'm gonna show you this delicious recipe. Uh, it goes back quite a ways. I did do a little research on this. Uh, some people might tell you, hey, that's just beef schnitzel from Germany. It's true. It goes back to Germany, but believe it or not, it actually goes back before that. Uh, the Romans were using a or, or producing a dish very much like this. So anyway, this is chicken fried steak. It's flat delicious. Let's get in the kitchen and make this. Oh, don't forget the merchandise at satrotter.com. I've got some cool shirts, got some great caps. My recipes are there. It's a really neat thing. Check it out. Uh, link should be in the description. I think. Check it out. The first thing I want to point out on our ingredients is of course the star of the dish, our meat protein, that beef, right? In this case I'm going to be using a cut called the eye of the round. I find it makes a fantastic chicken fried steak and I'll show you why in a minute. We have some oil over here that I'm using peanut oil but any good cooking oil will work just fine. Uh, you need about three quarters of an inch to an inch in your pan. We're also using black pepper, salt. I have cayenne pepper out, but behind it is another spice. That's chipotle. This time for myself, I'm going to test chipotle and see if I like it. You can kind of mix things up sometimes. Use paprika for this if you'd like. I have buttermilk. I have flour. And then for our cream gravy, I've got some cream, flour, and butter over here. And we're going to be using salt and pepper to get it all kicked up. Folks, that's all there is to it. It's a pretty simple ingredients list. So let's get busy cooking this up. First thing I need to do is make a slice on this, the right thickness. I'm gonna pound it down, then I'm gonna get it seasoned. Let's get started. Folks, I'm getting ready to cut my meat. I want to be making about a three quarter inch wide cut, about the width of my thumb. Now, how to pound that meat down afterwards? I just use something simple like this. But if you want, if you have one of these, you can use a mechanical tenderizer. This one has a multiple sets of knives on it. it. Works really nice. They're not necessary. If you just got a skillet or a pan to pound that cutlet down, that's fine. Now, the reason we're going to do this pounding it down thing, it's very important. We want to separate those meat fibers as much as possible. 
The idea is to get the meat under control so that it doesn't pull up and get thick and release from the batter. We don't want that. We want it to stay in place and stay the same size. So we have to put it through this process. After it's pounded, then I'll season it. Well, folks, the cutlet is pounded out. It's now about twice the diameter as it was before and about half the thickness, just right for making chicken fried steak. Now we need to season this up, so put some salt, black pepper, and I recommend another chili powder on there. Some, something like I'm using chipotle powder, you can use cayenne, you can use paprika, you can use ancho powder, but use something to get a little of that southwestern flavor going on that meat. Don't worry about the heat. Any capsaicin oil that's in this will wash out in the oil that you're frying in. It'll just dilute it right out. So don't worry. It's very hard to make meat hot from spices when you're frying. So season it up as you would like, and then I will get it battered up right after that. I'm getting my oil heated up to fry in. I like to use a fry thermometer, candy thermometer. There's many different kinds that'll work for this but make sure you use a thermometer and keep your heat under control. Heat this over a medium high heat. You should be able to keep it right about that temperature for the whole operation, okay? Folks, I have my buttermilk. It's about to go in this bowl. My cutlet's ready. My flour back here is ready for dusting and we're about to get on with this. Now, we start by putting the meat in the flour, then buttermilk, then flour, then the oil, and it's up and cooking. As I'm frying up my chicken fried steak, I'm going to be making my cream gravy. I have put my butter in a saucepan. As soon as this melts, I'll put in the flour and I'll mix it in with a whisk. That'll need to cook for a couple of minutes until it turns tan colored. Then I pour in the cream, mixing it in and letting it come back into temperature. It will then thicken up. All right, it's just that simple. After that, we season it up. My gravy's thickening up. I'm just getting it seasoned out now, and look at that. Beautiful, thick gravy, just right. Well, I have my cutlet fried up and ready to go. A plate to put it on. I've got some mashed potatoes that I fixed earlier. I have my cream gravy, and it's all going to make one delicious meal. Plating is so important on this. The quantity of oil that I used, it's going to depend on your pan, but you're looking for a fry depth of about three quarters of an inch to one inch. On the black pepper, today's recipe, let me explain a little bit, folks. This is not the same recipe as I have online. The one I have online is for three to four cutlets, and what I'm showing here is good for about two cutlets. All right, so I've got my eye of the round that I'm using, Cut about a three quarter inch thick slice from that and pound it out. On the uh, pepper, salt, and cayenne, that is just to taste, gently dust it over the meat. You're gonna need two cups of buttermilk. I have two cups of flour here, and generally um, it'll be two to three cups. For my cream gravy, I started with one pint of cream, six tablespoons of butter, and one quarter of a cup of flour. And to that, to season it out, I used a half a teaspoon of salt and half a teaspoon of black pepper. And of course, if you want to increase that black pepper, that's up to you. Folks, that's the recipe. It's a good one. Let's take a look at this gorgeous dish. All right, it's time to get this thing plated up. Oh, I'm looking so forward to this. Now, folks, I love my mashed taters, and I love mashed taters when I'm doing chicken fried steak, so I think they just go together. Wow. Crust is crispy. Now, we have to adorn it with a little bit of cream gravy, and the whole thing is going to work out just fine. Here we go. Chicken fried steak with cream gravy. Mm. 
Mm. Yeah, it's crunchy. It's delicious. It's chicken fried steak, man. <laughs> what can I say? Enjoy your chicken fried steak. Please, take a look at Texas cooking today. I've got a lot of recipes there, folks. Um, the mashed potatoes recipe I'm using on this, that's on my channel, okay? That's my extra creamy, mash, uh, extra creamy mashed potatoes. It's an easy recipe, it's delicious, and it's the way mash should be. The chicken fried steak, fantastic. I think the choice of the chipotle powder is something I'm going to repeat. I like this. The cream gravy came out perfect, nice and thick, delicious flavor. And folks, this is a good way to do your chicken fried steak. So please enjoy it. Take a look also at my website. Uh, you'll get the caps for Texas cooking today there. You'll also get uh, recipes there. My website is satrotter.com. It's real easy. Uh, so you can find all kinds of stuff there. And for this recipe, you're gonna find a link in the description down below that'll take you right to my website. Thank you very much. Enjoy your day, enjoy your chicken fried steak, and folks, you have a good day. Bye-bye. Oh, yeah. Mm.